Hey YouTubers, this is the Anonymous Reality TV blogger. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Today we're going to review Love Island Australia Season 3, Episode 10. We pick right up with um, Chris and Zoe and them sharing a kiss and everybody like cheering them on. And then the guys kind of hyping Chris up in the background after the fact. Also, Mitch and Emily go somewhere and share a kiss. And Mitch is still saying that he's confused. Also, um, Nicholas pulls Tina in for a chat, and then Tina and Mitch have a chat, kind of where things stand, and, you know, then Tina starts crying because she's sick of the love triangle that's happening. Um, so then the following morning, uh, Zoe gets a text to choose three guys to cho make breakfast for her and have a speed date, and then Nicholas had the same um, for his end, for him to choose three girls to make him breakfast. So Nicholas chose Tina, Lexi, and Courtney, and Zoe chose Ryan, um, Taku, and Chris. And it was just random <laughs> because Ryan has, like, nothing to talk about, and he was saying, you know, she's, I'm gorgeous, she's gorgeous, so we have that in common. And he's telling her that, you know, he knows how he is getting books to learn how to read. <laughs> like, it was just totally, like, random conversation. And um, and then, um, you know, Mitch is, like, looking on with the Tina date with Nicholas with a little bit of jealousy there. And he's in his feelings because he had reiterated the night before that he kind of got triggered with just seeing Tina with another guy and this and that. And so um, he still kind of had this mean mug on his face. So after the speed dates were over, because like not much really happened, um, they did a mechanical bull riding where the men go first and um, the females basically had to vote on who rode the bull the best. So, of course, the guy who slept with 500 women, Ryan did the best, the mechanical bold riding, I mean, of course. And so then for the female side, Tina won the best of out of the females to ride the mechanical bull. I thought it was cute that um, Ronnie had to pick up Ari to put her on the mechanical bull because she was short and she couldn't get on it. Um, I thought that was a cute moment. Um, after that, there was then the talk that Mitch had to make a decision in his triangle. Even though he was coupled up with Emily, he still had to make a decision in terms of who he was actually going to be with because even though they've been coupled up for a couple of days, he really hasn't made any move towards her, hasn't cuddled her, hasn't done really much of anything, um, has just been moping around. So it was time to kind of make that decision. So he ends up basically telling Emily that... He just wants to be friends. He doesn't want to pursue things with her. And so then she's, of course, a little bit upset because she's like, you know, I could have put my energy into somebody else. And basically she put all of her eggs in one basket. And so then it was funny because while Mitch is breaking to Tina that he's choosing her, the camera like cuts to Emily and she is like feverishly putting on her makeup and re-dabbing her foundation like very angrily. And it was just so funny with like the makeup brush and just like everything. And she's, you know, basically like, you know, I got to do what I got to do. I got to, you know, make this work for, you know, whoever so I can stay here. So um, and that she tried her best. And so while Mitch is telling Tina that he chooses her, Brian brings them some type of fruit platter, um, you know, once again. <laughs> so um, and then Mitch puts on his glasses to start crying. And I'm like, OK, dude. Um, then also we got some couples cam of Aaron and Joss and them telling each other that they wanted to lick um, peanut butter and just telling him she wanted to like tomato sauce off of him and like it looked like a little Listerine um those little mouth um patches it looked like it was like planted on Jess's butt and like nobody said anything like the entire time and it was really hilarious because it was just so random and so basically they showed Aaron in the confessional saying that his feelings for Joss are falling deeper and he thinks that she's falling deeper for him as well. And um, 
Then we fast forward to the nighttime activities with everybody getting dressed for the evening. And then Ronnie has a chat with Ari that he wants to put in more effort with her, but he feels that she's sort of pulling back. And so then she's kind of telling him that she doesn't want to get hurt again, which is why she's pulling back. But I think deep down, um, they were right on the truth break that she basically amped up her interest in Ronnie so that she could stay um, and be coupled up with somebody so she wasn't vulnerable to being eliminated since she was already a single after Lexi took Ryan from her. So I think she's just waiting for somebody else. I don't understand why her and Taku just didn't be remain a couple from the beginning or at least get in a friendship couple because even with Taku, everybody is going back to him as like a sloppy second. Like none of the women are truly interested in him until, you know, their number one choice dumps them. So Taku has to be having that in the back of his mind as, you know, he sees these women now all of a sudden claiming to be interested in him after completely grafting other men the entire time. So leading into that, we then have Emily who goes over to Taku and pulls him for a chat and tells him that, you know, she wants to rekindle things with him even though I didn't know that things were kindled before because even on the first dates, she did not pick him. She picked Mitch and Ronnie. And yeah, she kissed him on the workout challenge, but that was more so because she couldn't choose Mitch and she wanted to make him jealous. It wasn't because of actual interest in Taku. And so now all of a sudden she's telling him, oh yeah, I fantasized about you before I got here. And and <laughs> Taku starts laughing and he's like, what the heck? Well, that's not what he said. He said something else, but they cut it out. And so then he was like, well, was it good? <laughs> like, because it was just laughing and he was basically saying in his confessional, like everything goes from zero to 100 in this place. But I think deep down Taku knows that these women are full of it and are just trying to stay on the show after their number one choice basically ditches them is essentially where we're at. Um, so Emily's basically just trying to graft and make sure she has a backup option in the event that a recoupling happens. And of course, you know, Tina and Mitch get back together that she has somebody who's going to select her is really all of that was. So then um, from there, um, Zoe and Nicholas get a text basically to make a decision on who they want to choose. Nicholas is trying to start up some drama with like Lexi and Ryan. And he's basically telling her all this stuff that I think is lies, but basically trying to, you know, see if she's going to take the bait and, um, you know, pursue things or let things happen with him. And, um, you know, she basically said she's all about Ryan, um, and not to pick her. So, Nicholas goes first. He chooses Courtney, obviously. And then Zoe goes next. And then she chooses Chris, obviously. And so then right after that, Emily gets a text. And at first I thought she was getting eliminated, but then I forgot she was in a couple with Mitch. Um, but basically they said, you know, nothing is what it seems and that there's already, you know, there's seven couples, you know, and that anything can happen. And so then we cut to the end of the episode where basically they tell us there's going to be a double elimination. Um, so I don't know if that means two couples are going to be eliminated or two people or how all that's going to go because they made it a point to emphasize that there's seven couples. So I don't know if it's just going to be one of those things where you know, people vote on the top couples that they like and then whoever the bottom couples are, um, the bottom like two or three couples you know, people make a decision based off of that, like, which boy and girl they want to keep. Because um, I think usually they do that. It's usually like one of the last recouplings that happened right before Casa Amor. So I think that's where we're heading that they might do another recoupling potentially or do the existing couples that um, are the highest voted and um, are at risk for staying or at risk for leaving and and are the Australia's favorite. So we will see. I'm waiting around for 
um, some upcoming previews to hopefully come out soon to see if that's going to be the case, if there is going to be a recoupling, and then they're going to break the news that it'll be a double elimination as well right after that. And then after that, we're going to smooth into, um, you know, Casa more because I feel like Ari, Taku, um, and Emily need Casa more the most out of everybody um, with just the journeys that they've had in here. So hopefully that is to come after this latest double elimination happens, hopefully tomorrow. So that is it. Um, please let me know your thoughts and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys again soon.